find yourself parenting in the middle of a pandemic and trying to drink your coffee, this Ember mug keeps your coffee warm all morning long. Good morning. It's the first full day of AAS 237. We have two young kids, and so I'm spending the morning watching the boys. Then I'll swap for a few hours and get to attend the conference. Then back to watching the boys. This is how work goes during a pandemic. There's a few sessions I'm really looking forward to. Uh, I'm giving a iPoster Plus talk thing this afternoon, which should be interesting. Today is all about figuring out how this meeting is gonna go. What are the iPosters gonna be like? Are people gonna show up to the gather town that we left open after hack day? Will I be able to trade on and off successfully and do childcare and conference? We shall see. Come with me and let's see how it goes. Now I need to find work for my coffee. All right, the first sessions are getting underway and having a couple technical difficulties. I can't join the Zoom link, so I'm not sure what to make of that. All right, it turns out there's nothing wrong with the Zoom link. It's that the plenary talk was an hour ago. I think my brain needs to be rebooted. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> okay, so I missed the morning plenary that I was trying to go to by an hour because... So I posted on the Slack asking if anybody else is having problems giving the poor tech support a heart attack, only for my friend, Dr. Meredith Rawls, to remind me that that was an hour ago and that... So that was hilariously embarrassing already. So then I go to private message Meredith on Slack to, you know, to commiserate about time zones and children, and I message the wrong Meredith. So thank you to Meredith Hughes, who patiently listened to my seemingly random complaints about time zones and wished me a better week. Uh, I hope it goes smoother than this. Okay, I managed to join some talks. A tau is a prototypical, which I'd like to contrast as meaning boring, <laughs> T-Tori star, um, right? Many of its parameters are what we op actually usually use as uh, the mean parameters for a typical T-Tori star when we're doing modeling. A talk from my former postdoc advisor and good friend, Kevin Covey. Cool talk, Kevin. Thank you for this cool system. I'm wondering if there's any um, value in doing a higher cadence monitoring of the system. Here's this little simulation that shows um, the surface of a red supergiant with its large convective cells. And they have these episodic mass loss events like what we've seen with Betelgeuse recently. All right, well, that part of the conference experience is the same. I need more coffee. My goals today are threefold. One, I have to give a poster talk. I have double checked the time to make sure that I get it right. Number two is to try to figure out all the bits and pieces of the meeting, how to join the talks, how to meet the exhibitors and go to the various booths to just figure all that out. I'm, I'm not gonna try to get all the booths in today. I think tomorrow's gonna be a better day to try to catch all the exhibitors. And then my third goal today, my goal every day, is to chat with some people. I've been at the conference for an hour now and I haven't talked to anybody yet. There hasn't been a, a way to organically bump into people yet, so I'm gonna need to like seek them out. How do we make that networking and that interaction happen? Uh, I don't know yet. <music> Gather Town just had its first major win for me. I ran into somebody who I didn't know, and I talked to them for just a minute, and it was really nice. More of that, please. My name is Emily Rice, and I'm here to talk about Star Toilist which is the universe's premier astro fashion blog turned shop. I like that. The universe's premier astro fashion. <laughs> they haven't fashion. been disproven yet, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you're running the booth Teak. Uh, are you running it with, you're running with Kelly? Are you running it every single day, all five days of the meeting? Yep, yep. We started yesterday in Washington, D.C. in 2014. So seven years ago, we really officially launched the blog. A couple years after that, we presented it as a poster at the at the AAS and the education and public outreach sessions, number one question we got asked was, where do I buy stuff? Right. Which we did not anticipate. Luckily, Debbie Kowalski, who's the exhibits manager for the AAS meeting, told us that we could sell stuff at the meeting. Whether or not you put in thought into what you wear, it does, you know, convey who you are and what you care about to the rest of the rest of the universe, whether in person or virtual. Like every step, it feels like it's, you know, it hasn't been a like, oh, yes, we definitely have to do this. It's been like a very natural next step that's been propelled by like the enthusiasm of our colleagues, which is just, um, but overall, it's our goal to just 
to improve our experiences as professional astronomers, help us express ourselves, help us celebrate our science, help us dress our press, incorporate art and design and creativity into who we are and what we do as well. I think that's that's a really unique and like important thing about startorialists, right? Like I've been to a few other conventions and conferences where like selling things is a big component of what the exhibitor hall is about and what really, you know, like a, like a comic book convention, like it really is yeah. like sales driven. But this is a piece of that happening inside of a professional science conference. And that's why I think it's so special that it's run by scientists that, that you are, you know, I would, I would say a scientist first, just because I'm assuming that pays you more than the startorialist booth is paying you. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that I really love about Startorialist and Dot Astro and the Hack Day. And I, I always appreciate that attitude of like, like let us build our community together. Like it, it is not just a community that you join and you just like are a passive part of, but like it only becomes good if we contribute and build things ourselves. And like that, that maker DIY mentality that we can build the community we want. I think I find yeah. that empowering oh. and encouraging. Absolutely. It's, and it's, it's a really nice, uh, um, I think the AstroPie calls it a duocracy. Yeah, yeah. It's duocracy. like, okay, wh you know, whoever does it first kind of wins. Um, Astronomy on Tap is very similar. Like Astronomy on Tap and Startorials for me kind of developed along the same time and along the same lines, weirdly enough. For people that don't know, I'm also the headquarters of Astronomy on Tap. Right, that's right. I think Astronomy on Tap started first and Startorialist started as a little bit of DJ Carly Sagan's closet or stylist. So two more things that I want to make sure to get on this video. Uh, you have webinar uh, b booth events going on. We're on Zoom, we're on GatherTown, we're on the vFairs platform for the, show, um, for the conference. And we have two webinars coming up, one on Wednesday, it's kind of an intro to Astro Fashion. I've done that at a couple conferences before. But for the first time, I'm really excited about this. We're going to try a virtual fashion show on Friday. 1.30 on Friday, East Coast time. Fashion show yeah. on the Startorialist Zoom. And then the second thing is, and you just mentioned it, which I'm super excited about, is that Startorialist set up a gather town, which again, going yeah. to that duocracy, do it yourself, just make it and they will come. It's a really fun place to just, if you're at the conference, to run into a couple people. Uh, Emily has been there wandering around. Uh, I've run into you already. Yeah, there. I think I'm, I might be there right now. <laughs> and I want to say thanks to Laura Mayorga for setting all this gather town up for me. Thank you, Emily. Good luck with the boutique. And I look forward to the fashion show. Thank you. Part of today is turning into like Jim learning to use technology. So me catching the right time zone, clicking the right Zoom link, navigating the three or four platforms that we're using to make this conference happen. So it's happening in a lot of places and a lot of windows, and it's easy to get lost and confused. Getting set up for our session, iPoster Plus session. So this is a five-minute talk, but you have to use your poster for the talk. You can't use slides. So that's kind of interesting. Those are what's called uh, delta I, the difference in the heights of um, the primary and secondary maxima. NGC 3603A1 is in this um, galactic giant H2 region, NGC 3603. And it's really exciting because it is the uh, orbital mass record holder according to some spectroscopy from the VLT. This work found that the primary component was around 116 solar masses. For context, wow. is quite heavy because the previous orbital mass record holder was around 85 solar masses. Our next speaker is uh, James Davenport. Jim, you ready? The stage is yours. Okay, so I'm going to talk to you about one particularly interesting system that's caught my eye um, over the last uh, six or eight months, uh, and this is an eclipsing binary known as HS Hydra. Um, this has been a really fun project because it's been something we can work on in a sort of a distributed manner over a uh, distributed time uh, during this pandemic. So I've been really happy to be working with a lot of really talented students from uh, senior grad students to uh, post-baccalaureate and undergrads. It's been a really wonderful human project. I think it's been special. All right, well, that five-minute talk went just fine. This is now the third or fourth time I've given, essentially, this talk, so it's it's pretty smooth now. My review of the iPoster platform is not exceptionally high. My biggest problem is that the templates that they provide really encode sort of bad design practices, which make posters hard to engage with. I think a lot of this could be fixed with improved templates. Moving forward, my other thought with the iPosters is that next year when we're hopefully back in person i would love to see AAS explore other options for this product for this kind of experience i would love to hear what you think put a comment or tweet me 
let's have this discussion. Let's not just have unfocused snark. That's good too. Let's try to think constructively. What are the products and what are the properties of these products that we want? Just like my discussion with Emily Rice from the Startorialist earlier, these meetings only get better if we engage. We have to create the meeting that we want. So if you have thoughts, please share them. Let me know. Tomorrow I won't be giving any talks, but I will be trying to find more people to talk to. My goal tomorrow is to engage with the exhibitors. There's a bunch of webinars and Zoom rooms that I want to be at. And the last challenge is I have to edit this video tonight, so fingers crossed there. That's it from me for AAS 237 Day 1. Uh, now I'm going to go build some Legos. <laughs>